Because we are alive. Are we alive? I don't know. It says we are. We're alive. I am here. It's a true story. Okay. Let me, I want to share it. Give us a second. And you need to turn that down. We do this every time. Every time. Every time. I knew there was a step I was forgetting. Is that better? I think so. Okay. Good morning. Hi, sorry. Hi. Wait, didn't you have time to set this all up? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> all right. Are we good? Yeah. Say hi to everybody. I did say hi to everybody. Hello. I, I put the comments on the wall thing. Yeah. We're just adjusting things, everybody. Super boring. Good morning, Kristen and Deborah. And your mom. Oh, hello, mom. Okay. Did I post on mine? I don't know. Did you? Maybe. I, you did. I don't oh, know. Good. I don't know how long my um my voice is gonna last, but well, we have to finish the episode. So okay, <clears throat> are you ready? So we should start the episode then. Should we begin? We should begin. All right. Hey, um, after after we get done recording, I was thinking we could have a little extra content for everybody. Oh, do you have extra content? Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe. All right. It's yeah. good. The extra content is gonna be a Q and A. That's what it is. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? I'm ready. Hi, and welcome to the Changing Perspectives podcast, the show where we discuss a variety of topics, including grief, parenting. I did not do a good job with that. At just all. rolled with it. <laughs> no, it's funny for the live audience, but this won't make it in the actual podcast, okay. just so everybody knows. Let's try that again, shall we? Take two. Okay, I don't need to rename it. I don't know what it is. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, this might be in like an office gym situation where I might not be able to get through it, so don't look at me. Okay, I'm not looking. Okay. Hi, and welcome to the Changing Perspectives podcast, the show where we discuss a variety of topics, including grief, parenting, relationships, mental health, and pop culture. Join us and explore a number of changing perspectives. We're your host, Jenny and Josh Brennan. Good morning, Jenny. Good morning. How are you? I'm okay. So that, I'm still froggy. You're like still froggy. Three weeks in a row. It's sticking with you, the allergies. Yeah. Although pollen was supposed to be down today, so hopefully you'll see a little. No, it's not down. No, it is. It oh. just doesn't seem to be helping. Doesn't seem but to be But I did open my windows for the first time in like two yeah. weeks, and I don't think I should have, maybe. Maybe not. Maybe. You we'll always see. regret this. Mm -hmm. I know. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 78, uh, 78, 78 episodes. Uh, we just reached a pretty great milestone, uh, 10,000 downloads, Jenny. That was recently, right? Uh, yeah, Over we, 10, we blew right through that, actually, when I yeah, looked at it today, exciting too. Exciting stuff. Thank you, everyone, for all your support. We've gotten, gotten a lot of new listeners, I feel like, recently, um, really secondary to all the great work Jenny is doing um, and the writing world, really, and blogging and um, the online community. So great work. Um, I hope everyone is paying attention to the newsletter and the Changing Perspectives presence on social media, Instagram and Facebook. You get to see a lot of what Jenny has been contributing as far as new articles um, being shared by so many different outlets, grown and flown today, parents, her view from home, um, you're blowing up. Don't leave me in the dust, Jenny. That's my plan. Take, take me with you. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm still your fellow <clears throat> podcaster. You are. Um, hey, speaking of the Changing Perspectives newsletter, head on over to changingperspectivesonline.com. Sign up for the newsletter. Um, you also get a weekly Wednesday wisdom, which I thoroughly enjoy. You get a weekly little um, gem from Jenny, and then, of course, the monthly newsletter. Jenny, tell everyone what's going on today on the merchandise. Oh, a 15% off sale. And I say today. Uh, and I think it's through the week. I think it actually is through Monday. Mm. So this is- I can check. This episode drops on Monday the 5th. Um, 
Happy birthday to my sister's in law. That's right. Um, this drops on the fifth, uh, but we are recording this on the third, and we are live streaming. So, uh, welcome to everyone who listened to this and watched oh, it's it. It's actually it's through the seventh, so uh, we're so we're good. Fifteen uh, percent off sale now through October seventh. All kinds of great stuff. Um, I have once again on the stream my changing perspectives coffee mug, which is my favorite coffee mug. It's um. What is it called? The aluminum? It's like it's a like camping, camping mug. mug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I have the Changing Perspective shop pulled up. Um, I'll go ahead and drop a link in this to the live stream right now. Um, Jenny has created all kinds of excellent, fun stuff, and in including something that's special to Changing Perspective's listeners, uh, a by Jenny design. I did not put that it's up, coming. though. I'm it's coming. I want one. Yeah. Other people have to want one before I before I upload that. Everybody, tell us now if you're live streaming this or let us know in the comments. That puts people that puts pressure. Let us know. Bye, you let's want, move on. Do you want by Jenny merchandise? Because I do. And our son Jacob wants a lean into it shirt. By the way. I think I made one. I Maybe. don't think I uploaded those either. Oh, uh, okay. Anyway, uh in Dorsey, which is a great um thing for the fall. Sunday fun day, coffee please, fur mama, football mom, all kinds of great stuff. Um, uh, fall inspired gear as well as of course changing perspectives merchandise as well. Uh, and Christmas. And I said that. Did I say that? Oh, did you I say said that? holidays. I don't, oh, okay. I don't know. Folks, changing perspectives is brought to you by betterhelp.com. That's better H E L P dot com. Better help is an online counseling resource who makes professional counseling accessible, affordable, and convenient. They offer four ways to get licensed counseling through video sessions, phone call, live chat, and messaging. As everyone knows all too well, these are challenging times, and the broad expertise of the BetterHelp Counselor Network could provide anyone struggling with life's challenges the help they need anytime, anywhere. Whatever struggles you're facing, whether it's depression, grief, and loss, anxiety, BetterHelp.com can provide you the counselor that's the right fit. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Changing Perspectives. After signing up, you'll be matched with a counselor in 24 hours or less. Again, visit BetterHelp.com slash Changing Perspectives. Um, go ahead and do that, everyone. We so I, are... I, I did make them. I just oh, didn't. You're showing it on the stream right I'm now. I'm showing it on the stream. I just yeah. didn't upload it as... Um... I didn't pick which merchandise to put it on and just didn't do it. Well, I, I think I think I was doing Jenny's a lot of that stuff hoodie. last weekend and then I stopped and walked away and we played video games with Jacob. That's true. And I didn't go back to it this week. Yeah. So well, maybe this weekend. Maybe this weekend. Okay. Maybe today. So what are we discussing today? Should we get into the episode proper? Yeah. Yeah. It's heavy stuff. It's heavy stuff, but it's important and needed. Um, and really relevant after this Very week. relevant. Mm -hmm. So we were inspired to chat with you guys today about pregnancy loss and grief um really because of two things it's, it happens well, to be and child loss child loss right mm -hmm. it happens to be national pregnancy loss awareness month in october um and also we're chatting with you guys on the heels of the tragic story of chrissy teigen and john legend um and their baby that died and jack jack yes um so she announced that early Thursday that she and her husband, John Legend, had lost their baby midway through their pregnancy. Um, and this has really sparked a lot of discussion about what the public's response is to someone that has lost a baby or a child um, during pregnancy. And it's that public response sparked you to write an excellent article that was picked up by Today Parents. It's on their Facebook page. Um, and you get you get a lot of a lot of response and um, folks reacting to your writing because people agree with you and it means a lot, especially to those that have lost that that have lost a child. In right. That way. Um, but I wanted to share a little bit about um, what Chrissy Teigen actually tweeted out. Um, she said, "We are shocked and in, in the kind of deep pain you only hear about." the kind of pain we've never felt before. We were never able to stop the bleeding, give our baby the fluids he needed, despite bags and bags of blood transfusions. It wasn't enough. She goes on to say, we never decide on our baby's names until the last possible moment after they're born, just before we leave the hospital. But we, for some reason, 
had started to call this little guy in my belly Jack. So he will always be Jack to us. Jack works so hard to be part of our little family, and he will be forever. Uh, she goes on. I'm just going to read the whole thing, if that's okay with you, Jenny. Mm -hmm. to, to our Jack, I'm so sorry that the first few moments of your life were met with so many complications that we couldn't give you the home you needed to survive. We will always love you. Thank you to everyone who has been sending us positive energy, thoughts, and prayers. We feel all your love and truly appreciate you. We are so grateful for the life we have, for our wonderful babies, Luna and Miles, and for all the amazing things we've been able to experience. But every day can't be full of sunshine. On this darkest of days, we will grieve, we will cry our eyes out, we will hug and love each other harder and get through it. So real and raw, and it was, you know, it sort of gets me emotional thinking, I think you're yes. getting emotional, you know, reading that. Um, but what are your, what was your, what are your thoughts about as far as from a grief specialist and, um, a mental health professional, what are your first thoughts after hearing that or reading what Chrissy Teigen said? So I think like most people, I start my day, um, by rolling over and picking up my phone mm -hmm. lately, it's to see the 57 emails I have from my kid's school <laughs> yeah. and sort of get prepped for at home. There is another art. I also wrote another article this week. I'm waiting to see if it's getting picked up um, before I, before I push it. Um, but it's about that. But after I checked all the emails on Thursday, I then saw that because even though Twitter is a cesspool, of negativity. Yes. It's also That's a good name for it. It's also I didn't coin it. Um it's also a great place to get information. Yeah. In real time. So that's where I first saw it was on Twitter and instantly also saw all of the negative comments. So saw the the post and right. the photos and I guess my initial reaction was obviously like that's really sad, it's heartbreaking and also good for them for posting it and for talking about that talking about it and naming it and just sort of being in that space and good for them for taking photos. Like they've got photos of their baby yeah. and they've got photos of their only moments with him, which are grief filled, but they have those moments. So good for them. They're kind of, they're, they're stepping into this space. That's a really healthy grieving space. Right. And then all the negativity, uh, backstory. There's a lot of negativity around Chrissy, Chrissy Teigen and John Legend anyways. Right. We won't get into that, but there's a whole sort of backlash against them on Twitter anyways. So reading all that negativity uh, inspired me. I, I couldn't get out of bed. I had to right. write it. I had to sort yeah. of write my response before I could even get out of bed because it's what I see all the time. Mm -hmm. This sort of like, it's okay. I mean, we don't do a great job with grief anyways in our culture at all. But we do a really bad job when we're talking about letting people grieve when they're parents, especially if it's an early yeah. delivery, a miscarriage, um, a late term loss, especially in that place. People do not want to hear it. They don't want to see it. They don't want to give space for it. And it's it's so heartbreaking. So I guess my initial reaction, my long answer to your question was a whole lot of emotions right. at the same time. And I think when there's something like that, we have to talk about it. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I was I was moved by what you wrote, Jenny, and we'll share the link uh, to Jenny's article, which is entitled, um, Can We Let Parents Grieve Without Judgment? Mm -hmm. That's a real question because a lot of those folks that were commenting disparagingly were not letting people grieve and judging people's grief judging their grief um a little bit about uh, i just thought it was interesting um i like chrissy Teigen, the john legend i'm a gigantic john legend fan well he's super talented oh my God. um and someone in the feed the live view feed just said i've always loved the two of them they have always been so real i yes. agree to me they're sort of in that same category as like dak uh shepherd why do yeah. i just dak prescott and dak shepherd are in my brain <laughs> filed as one person they're not <laughs> One's Dax with an X, the other one's Dax. We did, we realized this last night, but also, right. um, are they both Dax? That, they're both Dax. Oh, they're both Dax. Ben Affleck and Who's Dax. Nobody's Dax. There's got to be a Dax. Nobody's there. Dax. I'm going to look it up. Um, famous Dax. It doesn't matter. But, uh, uh, Kristen Bell and Dax Shepard, um, I also yeah, really like Dax because Shepherd they're real. With an X. Oh, he's Dax? Yes. Oh, okay. Dax is the football guy. All right. Okay. Guy. I'm gonna, so that's going to help me file it differently. The, Dallas Cowboys quarterback. Okay. 
Dex with an X. All right. So you always really liked them. Someone in our well, life feed always liked them too. Yeah. And um, and yes, Dex. Okay. Dex. <laughs> uh, they were married in September 2013. Um, they've been together since then. They have two children, a daughter born in 2016 and a son born in 2018. Well, they have three children. One died. Leading up to this. Okay. That's what I, that's what I was getting at. Um, and did you know the song All of Me was written for Chrissy Teigen? Yes. I think she's in the video. Oh, is she? Yeah, I think that was like super early in their relationship. I remember the first time I ever heard that song. Is that the one Jackson plays on the piano a lot? I play that one. Oh. And Jackson does too. Okay. And I play it on guitar. But um, do you remember the first time we heard that? I heard that song? We yep. were in Jamaica. And it was a guy not singing it, but playing alto sax. Uh, I was like, I really like this. We were like on the beach or something. And no, uh, was that when we went over to the little island? For it dinner? might have been. Oh, that's yeah. sweet. Okay. We had totally some, getting sidetracked. Totally sidetracked. But I love that song. And I think, and I didn't really realize it was written for her until I was prepping for this episode. And I, that just made me all warm inside. It's nice. Okay. Anyway, um, I wanted to, we, do a couple things first, Jenny. It's kind of up to you. I have a, a Mayo Clinic article that is coping with um, pregnancy loss that I was hoping you could sort of either agree with or not agree with or go through, or we can talk ab about National Pregnancy Awareness. Let's talk about the article first. Article first? Mm -hmm. Okay, then we can end with that, mm -hmm. maybe? Okay. Um, so this is entitled Pregnancy Loss, How to Cope. Um, this is the Mayo Clinic and we can share the link and it says understanding the grieving process after a pregnancy loss you might experience a range of emotions including where's my can't figure out my mic today uh including de denial it says denial at first it might be possible to grasp what's happened you might find yourself in shock or disbelief so yeah as, as with any loss but i think especially with pregnancy loss because society wants to deny it for you yes. they don't want you to talk about it they don't they don't want you to have pictures they don't want you to post about it right. and so and and there's and you can see it if you're friends with me because i shared the article on my personal page but also on the changing perspectives page and there were people um that shared their own personal stories and as with most articles uh that i write that are kind of real um and, and touching on real stuff i get messages from people like right. thank you for writing that it sort of came at the right time I don't want to share this publicly, but here's my experience. Um, people have, uh, you couples, women who are pregnant, have this sort of notion that like it's not okay to share their pregnancy news until it's somehow safe. Yeah. Safe. And I, because the vast majority of pregnancies in the very beginning, the first trimester, end in a miscarriage, which is so terrible, but it's something that happens so frequently, but we don't talk about it. Right. So, and I see a lot of young women, I see a lot of women struggling with fertility in my practice, and they have this notion that like for 12 weeks, or maybe six or seven by the time they find out they're pregnant, they feel like they can't tell anybody that they're pregnant, yeah. that they're hopeful, that they're excited, that this thing that they've wanted to have happen to them has finally happened. Yeah, finally you know, they're happened. they're you know they're feeling they're pregnant, they're feeling pregnant, all they're those feelings, but, feelings. They but they feel like they have to keep it secret because it's not safe. Because if something bad if something happens. Bad happens then people then might people feel uncomfortable. uncomfortable. I know, I know, I know, I know somebody, somebody, and I know, I know somebody personally person. who just told me that they were, in, when they were pregnant, they held it. They didn't tell anybody for a while because a lot of people in the circle had lost babies mm -hmm. during pregnancy. Um, so did they decide? Did they decide not to tell because of other people's feelings, yes. or because they were afraid they of lost themselves? Uh, Maybe a little bit of both, but it was explained to me as the, the first that it was they didn't want people to feel bad that people had lost mm -hmm. their friends had, who had lost a baby. Yeah, I mean, I think that happens too. Um, so there's so so there's these people that don't say anything, so no one knows they're pregnant, and right. then they have the loss, the baby dies, and then nobody knows about it, and so then they're grieving in silence. They're grieving alone. They're not able to tell work. They're not able to tell their friends. They're not able to tell their friend, their right. family. And so it's really easy to kind of be having these denial feelings come in. Can I ask a question? Yeah. And I'll probably take 20 minutes to answer it as I do. No, I like that. That's the whole, that's our, 
That's the format. Have you not the seventy eight episodes? Oh, that's how did you see that we're getting an echo? No. Oh, she says it's better. Okay. Um, so I have a question about maternity leave mm -hmm. after a loss. Mm -hmm. So, and I guess this would be, I just have a question for you as a professional, but, um, you know, would, would organizations, companies, how does it work? I mean, do they, does it become a bereavement benefit? I don't think I've ever seen a company give it as a bereavement benefit. It would be sick time. How I often see it being used mm. is sick time. I'm just curious. Because I feel like it should be the the maternity leave, like the 12 week, here you go. Okay. Regardless of. At any point, anything related to the pregnancy. Yeah. So if you. Birth, like, death, this, miscarriage. Chrissy, this, Chrissy Teigen had a normal job, nine to five. And. I would expect her to be given the regular 12 weeks if the baby had lived. Well, it, I mean, just, so I don't, that's a, that's a, I think a separate sort of question to talk about because in America, our uh, maternity and paternity leave is so different than yeah. in other uh, parts of the world. So I'm curious now what other parts of the world would do. Right. Um, but, but yeah. imagine if, if this happened, Chrissy Teigen and, and John Legend, you know, put it out there for everybody. They had photographs done. Um, so everybody knows about it. There's a whole lot of people who have the same experience and don't tell a single person. Right. So they might not want to tell their HR. They might not want to yeah. kick in their maternity leave. They might want to try a few months later to, to get pregnant again. And then maybe they won't have that maternity leave. Right. Right. In, in place. Um, but to your bereavement leave piece, I think, and I don't know what they've said, are they going to have a funeral for Jack? I don't know that they've talked about what they're going to do with his remains. Um, but there's a whole lot of people that, that don't believe we should do that. Like that, that babies that young shouldn't get a funeral or a wake or services or a, a grave marker or anything like that. So I'm curious what they're going to be doing. So I say that because I wonder if that would trigger like a bereavement leave at work. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't know if that's an, if anyone's an HR professional. It just, it just came up in my head. Okay. Um, the next thing they say so is... So not to answer your question, yes, I agree. Denial is very common. So the next thing they say is you might experience guilt. So you might wonder if you could have done anything to to avoid the pregnancy loss. Well, do you have her quote in front of you? Uh, I do. There was, um, there was something that kind of suggested her guilt. I feel like um, um, we weren't able to... <clears throat> There was a part where she like then we were never able it. to stop the bleeding and give our baby the fluids he needed right so yeah like right there mm -hmm. we can see sort of the the undertone there of guilt like we were never able to yeah. stop the bleeding we weren't able to give him what he needed absolutely i think that's probably the biggest feeling especially for women the feeling of like what's wrong with my body something's wrong yeah. with my body i wasn't able to support pregnancy or a healthy delivery right. or i keep having miscarriages and, you know, they've tested and there's nothing genetically wrong. What's wrong with me? Right. Absolutely. There's something uh, around guilt there. Uh, next they Un say. Unfounded. Un of course. Unfounded. But then yeah. I think any woman who's experienced a loss like that will say, I wonder if it's because I, I went for like an extra long bike ride last week. Or I wonder if it's because I stayed up late. Or I wonder if it's because I yelled at my other kids that right. day. Um, or I wonder if it's because I slept on my left side and maybe I'm not supposed to. Right. They, they grapple with that. There's a whole so bunch. much mm -hmm. that must go through a woman's mind when mm -hmm. it comes to that. For sure. Um, the Mayo Clinic says next you might experience anger. No matter what caused your loss, you might be angry at yourself, your spouse, your partner, your doctor, or higher power. You might also feel angry at the unfairness of your loss. Jenny, I'm, we haven't done like a child loss episode quite yet but i wanted to talk a little about this reminds me that you and i have discussed that a lot of the time like parents get divorced right like after a child death mm -hmm. there, there's just a lot of like tension between two parents when when a baby or a child dies um but it sounds like for, for sure during a pregnancy loss or a baby um the same sort of 
potential is there where there's a lot of anger. Is that, is that true? Yeah. Well, I think in any, any loss, mm -hmm. anger is a really common emotion when we're talking about grief, you know, sort of like what the question of why did this happen? Right. Um, you know, could the doctors have done something differently? Could my partner have done something differently? What is this world? That's not fair that this happens. Um, even in not a child loss, anger is really common. Right. And when you have anger, in a relationship, a partnership that can sort of breed resentment and pull couples apart. So, you know, there's that risk with any loss, whether it's loss of a parent, loss of a child, loss of a sibling, loss of a friend. Um, so often at some point in the grieving process, there is anger and sort of um, tension between the couple. And if that doesn't get resolved, then of course the couple is going to sort of grow apart. So that's, that's accurate. So far I'm agreeing with the Mayo article. So far. Mm -hmm. Um, next, they say you could experience depression. Uh, you might develop symptoms of depression, um, such as loss of interest or pleasure in normal activities, changes in eating, sleeping habits, and trouble concentrating and making decisions. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. that's grief. That's like getting back to our depression episode. That's like little d depression, not like an actual diagnosis right, of clinical right. depression. But depression is a, is a symptom, a sort of sign of grieving, totally normal behavior. Right. Um, I recently had someone reach out to me because uh, they wanted therapy for a friend of theirs. And, and the email was, my friend's really sad after losing her husband. And it's really annoying because she doesn't want to go anywhere with us or do things. And so we're trying to get her help so she can be happy again. Really sweet that they're yeah. looking for support for their friend. Um, but what they're describing is really kind of appropriate reactions and responses to grief. So, normal. yeah, I would expect that Chrissy and John right now are, are feeling pretty depressed. Yeah, absolutely. I don't, their other kids are really young, right? Yeah. 2016 was. The, yeah. The, where's my so notes? they're at really hard ages to kind of start to grapple with and understand death, too. So. Um, yeah, 2016 and 2018. They're yeah. little. Yeah, so they're going to be revisiting this over and over again mm -hmm. as their two children, their two surviving children, sort of move through all of their stages of development. Right. So, yeah, depression, for sure. Um, so denial, anger, depression. I mean, so far they're running through Elizabeth Kubler rosss five right. stages here. Guilt as well. Guilt, okay. Uh, next is envy. Uh, you might intensely envy expectant parents. It might suddenly seem like babies and pregnant women are everywhere you look. And I guess that's you know, the friend of mine that I referenced, um, that's what they were trying to avoid on the part of the bereaved mom. Um, but envy is, it seems like, it seems like it would be a very common emotion. Is that something that you Yeah, And it's a really hard emotion. Um, we talk about that in sessions a lot. Jealousy is a really, jealousy, envy is a really hard emotion for people to sit with. Um, because it has such a, a negative connotation, right? Like we're not supposed right. to feel jealous or envy, but it really is a natural emotion. Um, you know, even even animals feel it. Yeah. Um, I always think of a study with like monkeys where, I think it was monkeys, chimpanzees maybe, where they were in two separate cages and, and being fed next to each other and they could see each other's food. And the monkeys that were getting like the fancy grapes, uh, well, the monkeys that were not getting the fancy grapes were super jealous and started throwing their food at the, the testers yeah, because right. they saw they were jealous of what the other monkeys were getting. Um, people are the same way. And when you've experienced a loss and or you're having a difficult time getting pregnant, it's like if I say to you, how many red cars did you see today? And I think I used this example maybe in our last session or maybe I've just this is not a session. I, I, <laughs> is it? <laughs> this is where I sit when shirt? I'm doing sessions. So. Um, if I ask you right now, how many red cars did you see when you were out at the supermarket this morning, like driving to and from, do you know how many you saw? No. no but if no. I say to you today, when you go to the supermarket, count how many red cars you see, or just be aware of the red cars, you'll probably be able to come back and say, you know what? Uh, there were a lot of red cars. That's what it's like when you step into this world where you've had a loss, you've had a death of a child, if you're not able to get pregnant, any of those then boy is it really obvious when other people around you are pregnant are having babies are you know walking right. through a target with you know three kids under three a lot of jealousy and a lot of jealousy for friends so i have a lot of women who will sit in session and talk about how you know my friend just told me that she's pregnant 
And I just, I love her and I'm happy for her, but I can't be happy for her. I right. can't, I don't want That's to go fun. to the baby shower. Um, I don't want to talk about it. And that doesn't make them a bad person. It just means that they're grieving and we don't do a good job giving them space to grieve and talk about it. Right. So mm -hmm, I also agree with this one. Okay. There's a couple more. Okay. One more, two more. Uh, one more. Um, the last one they, they list is hearing it. You might experience feelings of deep or anxious longing or desire to be with your baby. You might also imagine what you would be doing with your baby now. Yeah. And that is something I mean, it reminds me of that lasting, enduring connection, right? Oh, you're good. Well, <laughs> I'm, I don't have my license, but I'm kind of in the I world, too. I should give too, you a, you know? let's give you the okay. final exam for one of I my classes. I do do this podcast do. with you. <laughs> um, but tell, tell us a little bit about that. So th th this is, I, I look at this as though it's a negative thing or like, the Mayo Clinic is listing it as if you might experience range of emotions, but that yearning motion could lead you to some very sort of healthy, um, normal grief journey stuff where you have that enduring connection. So talk a little bit about yearning. Do you, first, do you agree with that? And what does that look like as far as an enduring connection? Mm, see, I don't know that I would link the yearning with enduring connection. Okay. How, how would you? Well, and so just to define imagine that, what you'd be doing with your baby now, right? So like but that's this, not really an enduring. So an enduring connection when we're talking about. So, so just well, I, but, know, I was going to oh, I was, was going to explain connect. it to the Go listeners. Ahead. Go ahead. Oh, you connect it. You, you explain it. <laughs> so, for instance, you would be celebrating milestones, right? If so, imagining that you would be celebrating milestones or like six months birthday or a year birthday, right? So that imagine like yearning to do those things could tie into actually still celebrating because a birthday is still a birthday regardless of whether or not. So that's right? the difference between yearning and an enduring connection. Okay. And so an enduring connection, you know, everybody sort of, I think most people have heard of Kubler-Ross's five stages of, yes. of grief, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance. And she came out and she's like, oh, you guys all did that wrong. It's not what I meant. It's not progress. It's not a stage. It's not steps. There's a whole other list of emotions so cool. there. Um, and, and some of the later theories of grief and grieving in the morning process talk about things in terms of tasks. That are sort of like tasks people sort of struggle with as they're moving through the grieving process. And a lot of them, the sort of postmodern theories, sort of say that at the not end, but after you've sort of worked through processing all of your feelings, feeling, processing all of the pain of the grief, like allowing yourself to feel everything, adjusting to this new world, um, figuring out what your new world is going to look like, then it's really important and really healthy for there to be some development of an enduring, enduring connection, a continuing bond, something that cements you to the person that you lost a tree that you've planted in their name, um, visiting the cemetery every day, wearing a necklace from them, yeah. having their picture next to your bedside, something in which they are still a part of your life. Right. So that's the enduring connection piece is it's a, a thing that happens. Mm -hmm. Like you do celebrate their birthday. The yearning might, sorry, we have, okay. a ch we have a child out and about in the town, so I have to keep the phone on. Um, there was feedback. Uh, the yearning might, be a feeling that you're having before you've actually figured out what that enduring connection is. So I think sometimes they can be the same, but sometimes they're separate. Yeah. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay. Um, I wanted to point our attention to one of the comments in the live feed. I recently heard about a couple of miscarried twins and did have services. Um, and I feel like, I mean, it's obviously like an individual personal decision for each family, but, um, I feel like in most situations, the right decision is to have services. Yeah, I mean, I mean, in all losses, and I think right. that's what we're seeing a lot of in, in quarantine, is that uh, not being able to have sort of typical services mm -hmm. is really hard um, because the services aren't for, and you remember this from the, the sort of in-service that you and I went to years and years ago, um, the services are not for the decedent. They're not for the person who's died. I mean, they are, I guess, depending on your religion, right. um, you know, as sort of their 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 final sort of transition. But ultimately, when we're talking about sort of a grieving standpoint, they're for the grievers. The services are your yes. chance yes. to sort of publicly stand in your grief 
like Chrissy and John were doing online, stand in your grief and get support and sort of be able to have permission to, to be broken, right? To be the picture of Chrissy Teigen on the side of the bed, just a, a mess, a broken mess. And when you don't have that, there's no opportunity to sort of sit in that grief space and right. the world just kind of marches on. It's not that you get closure when you have those services, it's that it allows you space to grieve and we don't give that, especially um, to people who have who have lost a child in this way. I had known lots of people that didn't even know it was an option. Really? They didn't know it was an option for them to decide what to do with the remains. They didn't know it was an option for them to hold the baby, to take a photo with the baby. The, because some families might say, no, I don't want that, but others might. So it's really up to whether or not the medical staff presents them that option. And if they're not presented that option, that option's kind of gone. That's really interesting. That's really yeah. sad because they sit in session sort of grieving that they never had a chance to have those services. And so sometimes they will then decide to have some sort of, well, actually, I would say, thinking about, the, I would say all of them at some point after sort of giving themselves permission to do that, decide to do some sort of ceremony, even if they no longer have remains. So do you think that there is a universal, you know, um, I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so in the hospital setting, do you think that, you know, most hospital staff and social workers or child life specialists, you know, do a nice job of presenting everything to these families? Do you think there's a lot of work to do still in some, I guess it depends on the hospital, right? You would not make a very good interviewer. You're leading the witness. I know. Um, <laughs> I interview you all, I um, interview you all the time. I think it depends. Uh, I think that, I think like if you go all the way back to some of our earlier episodes, where we're talking about teachers and, and how much grief that they have to sit in and how little training they have yeah. and even social workers, social work education on the whole in the United States does not require you to take one single class in grief, mm -hmm. not one single class. There's a whole bunch of things they do require you. And some colleges do offer a course on grief. The one I teach at, the master's level program I teach at, there's no class on grief. There's no master's level class on grief. Um, so it's very likely that you've got nurses, social workers who come out and sort of find themselves working with women who are delivering and don't have that experience. Right. So I think it depends on the individual's training, their background, their personal feelings, their personal comfort with grief and loss. Um, and I think it varies pretty widely. Yeah. And so, too, does the woman, the couple's um, ability to sort of say, I want to see the baby. I want to hold the baby. I want, I want a funeral home to come and get the baby's remains. Not a lot of people know that they can do that. Right. There's a lot of unknowns, I think, when it comes to the, the loss of a baby. Because we don't talk about it. Yeah. And so when something doesn't get talked about, then it's sort of this scary thing. It's like we all kind of revert to kids. So what do kids do when they see something that um, isn't, uh, sorry, I was just getting a news alert. Um, they see something they don't understand. Kids typically sort of make fun of it, right? Adults kind of do the same thing. And I think that's part of what we saw on Twitter the other day is people don't understand grief. And they don't understand that what Christy and John were doing was a really normal, healthy expression of grief. Right. And so they don't understand yeah. it, so they mock it. Because we that's what we do with things we're afraid of and we don't understand. What are you reading? So there's, there's something I just learned about recently. Mm -hmm. um, there's a device that allows um, parents to stay with their baby's body for a long time in the NICU. It's got like this, it's like this innovative sort of- After the baby dies? Yeah. Oh. I just, I can't, I can't remember the name of it, but it's like this device that's a bed and it's got a blanket and helps. Cause you know, there's things that happen physiologically mm -hmm. to people when they die. Um, and those things, those processes you can't slow. Um, right. And so it starts right away, but there's ways to, um, to preserve, so to speak. That's why a lot of the seeds go into cooling. Um, but this device, it's like a, it's like an infant bed, but it has like this 
cooling blanket and these hose. It's like very, I will, I will try to find the name next time Jenny's explaining something. Please don't, because then you're not looking at <laughs> me. And it's so frustrating. I'm sorry. It's really hard for me to talk to someone who's not looking at me. I will try to figure out what that is, but I, I forget the name of it. But you will put, we'll put it in the show notes. We'll try to put it in the show notes. But, but again, again like, there's things that happen. Um, well, I'll stop you right there. Just that um, the invention of that speaks to what? Oh, parents who've lost a child have a need yes. to be with their body, yes. to hold their body, to touch their body. And maybe their need sort of extends beyond what nature would allow them comfortably to do. Right. Um, because that's what they'd help. Like, it's healthy for them to do that. Right. Um, I think we do a better job with that uh, with with children when they're dying. Not, not infants, but, you know, children. Right. Like, a children's hospital is for sure going to do a great job with that. They're going to encourage parents to get their child's footprints, handprints, locks of hair, mm -hmm. sit with their child. I mean, I've been there working at a right, children's right. hospital when um, children are, you know, uh, life support is withdrawn um, or, you know, they're just not able to sort of implement life-saving measures. There's there's a huge space. And that was, gosh, it's been almost 20 years since I worked yeah. there. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Let's just go with like 17. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so we were doing a really good job with that then because that was very common for children to die then. Um, but I think if you're, you know, if you're just delivering at like your local hospital down the street and there's no reason to think that the baby was not going to survive, maybe we don't do such a good job. Yeah, you're right. So, but I think things are changing. I and to... I will say, sorry, I keep cutting That's you right. off. On the whole... Right, like there's a whole lot of people who were saying, like in response to my article, our other articles people wrote, and to Chrissy and John's photos, mm -hmm. like, no, this is normal. This is grief. This is okay. This is what I did for my baby too when my baby yeah, died. Yeah. This is okay. I think there are more people who are sort of being really brave and mm -hmm. and 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 doing things like posting photos of them at their child's grave every year on their child's birthday and yeah. talking about their deceased child all of the time because right. those are healthy things to do. Um, I want to come back to your article, um, but and there's this the second sort of section of the Mayo Clinic article which talks about moving towards healing. But before we do that, talking about um, you know sort of what happens after death, there's another option that I don't think really comes up a lot is the topic of neonatal donation. Mm. Um, so what well, I do, organ, mm -hmm. eye, and tissue donation, but there's also um, sometimes an opportunity for whole body donation or some sort of anatomical gift donation for, for learning and research. Can I ask you a question about sure. that? So I know that I've learned a lot about sort of the federal laws around um, donation and, and it being offered to mm -hmm. people. What are the laws around it when it comes to infant loss? Like a like a pregnancy loss, like like something that it sounds like based on what Chrissy posted, it sounds like the baby was born alive, mm -hmm. um, but then was not able to survive. Sure. That's what it sounds like. Um, do you know what the sort of regulations are in terms of does that get phoned in or referred to their local organ procurement organization? Yes. Does it has to? It has to. If the baby is born alive. Mm -hmm. Well, and sometimes if the baby's not born alive. Is it depends on state and yeah, it's usually state dependent, but okay. the, the uniform anatomical gift act is a federal act and, um, CMS guidelines, uh, are part of what are requires hospitals to refer to their OPO or organ procurement organization, um, including for pregnant, you know, young infant deaths. So what if it's a baby deaths. that's born, still born, still, we still do, do, do still requires a referral huh. because if you have a baby that's stillborn but maybe the last fetal movement was recent um you know when sometime in the next the last 12 hours the baby's old enough age-wise there still might be an opportunity for donation so the requirement would be that the hospital would have to mm -hmm. uh at least broach that topic with their sort of local yeah. organization and then sort of screen whether or not right. the baby would be Sometimes potential the definition of the term, I don't, really, I don't really like this term, and I, I would assume that you fetal demise. Sort of fetal demise mm -hmm. yeah. The definition of fetal demise or stillborn um, 
sometimes differs from hospital to hospital and that might drive the the policy as far as referring to the organ donation organization but still i mean it's very similar okay. um but i wanted to refer everyone to a, re a website called purposefulgift.com um and a woman by the name of bethany conkle writes uh is the creator of this and she um, and her husband created this organization, nonprofit organization, and their goal um, is to increase awareness about neonatal organ eye and tissue donation and whole body donation. Um, they lost their son, um, Amalia Nathaniel, um, in 2012, uh, and he was able to participate in donation, and he positively affected a lot of important research about um, like neonatal liver donation and liver transplant. Um, really an amazing story. I had the benefit to meet her a few years ago. Um, and it was for me, one of those very impactful professional moments that just sticks with you. Um, and so I'll drop the link to her website um, if you're interested to learn more about neonatal donation. There is also, she doesn't work for the, um uh, what's the big, is it, what's the, what's your big organization that sort of overviews it, oversees everything? Well, there's Association of Organ Procurement Organizations, no, AATB. I think it's American. AATB. Yeah. She, she doesn't work for AATB, does she's she? She's connected. She's spoken on behalf of them. Okay. She works, she's a consultant. Basically. There is a, um, a TED talk that I show in my brief classes and I can't remember the woman's name, but um, she had twins and one of the t twins died. Um, but he was able to be a donor and she was then able to find out what his donation was used for. And it was, um, there was a lot of vision research um, that went into uh, his donation or was came out of his donation. I'll find that TED talk too, because it's a really great yeah. TED talk okay. talking about the grieving process for a parent who's lost a child, um, an infant, and been able to have them uh, be a donor. Yeah. So I'll also, I guess our links are going to be super full. Well, that's good. Chock full of good stuff. Yeah. Uh, we had a comment on the live stream. Uh, baboons have been seen to carry their deceased child around for a while. Yeah, we can learn a lot about grief from animals. Yeah. So um, a lot of birds, when they lose their partners, that that yearning, that searching, mm -hmm. we see them do that. Like they've seen their, their partner's dead body. And yet what we see them do is we see them searching for it. Like they're yeah. just flying, they're traveling. It's as if they're searching for their calling. They're doing their right, sort right. of mating call for that partner out because there's this sort of yearning and searching that we do. Um, and instinctively, that is what is sort of a natural instinct is to hold our loved yeah. ones. Oh my gosh, pretty much every other culture right. and country right. around the world, that's what they do. They sit with their right. dead bodies. Um, the... Um, Taiwan, oh my gosh, what is the name of the culture? Uh, totally gonna forget it now, but they like live with their decedents. They yeah. do sort of a rough embalming of them and they they live with them and treat them as if they are sleeping mm -hmm. um, for a period of time until which they could give them sort of a proper burial. Wasn't that in the Indonesian? <sighs> yeah, well, I can't remember Indonesia that. As well. We yeah. talked about that. I can't remember. Place. Yeah, it's not Taiwan. It's um, Indonesia. Mm -hmm. uh, the it starts with a T. It does? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It'll come up again. Um, all right. Do you want to review the next part of the Mayo Clinic article? It says moving towards healing. Mm, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is, we'll see if you agree with Let's. what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so it says, make your own decisions. Uh, Well-meaning friends or loved ones might suggest clearing out reminders of your baby, such as maternity clothes, but the decision is up to you. You're not mm -hmm. ready to pack things. If you're not ready to pack things away, take as much time as you need. Yep, for sure. I would say you very much so agree with that. Absolutely. There is there is no guidebook on this, but yes. there is um, there are some still guides. Yeah. And one okay. is to do what feels right for you. Right. That would, that's, seems kind of obvious to me. Like, don't. If you're not ready to do whatever, then don't do it. Right. I think, yeah, it seems obvious, but I think we, it seems obvious to you because you work in grief every day, right? But if you don't, it might seem obvious to just deny and avoid and push it away right, and right. hide it. And that's probably not going to do you any good mm -hmm. in terms of grief, uh, but it might. You, you sort of know yourself best. Right. Um, next, they say, create memories of your baby. You might want to name your baby. You might also find comfort in holding a memorial service. 
personalizing, personalizing a piece of jewelry, planting a tree, so many, uh, they list a few different other options. They talk about handprints or footprints at the hospital, having the baby christened. Um, I think I worked with a, that sounds familiar to me. Um, might even swaddle your baby, take photos with him or her, mm -hmm. some professional photographers specialize in working with families experiencing pregnancy loss. Right. So why are people freaking out that Chrissy and John took right. these pictures, right? Like there are photographers. This is what they do. They take these end of life photos. And if you go back a couple centuries, it was really commonplace here in America for us to take photos of yes. our dead relatives. We on our list is a and masks, masks, death masks. Say, yeah, mm -hmm. that's on our list. Oh. I, I was going to suggest it soon to you. I think we should do it. Soon. Okay. It's such an interesting topic to me, death masks. But a, a, an episode is coming on that. Yeah, um, and I thought it was so powerful when she said, "We don't normally name our baby this early, but we did this time." Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that is something that is making this loss. Not easier, but it's something that she's able to. John and Chrissy are really able to hold on to, and knowing that they they knew his name well before. I mean, that's all they have of him, right? I want to share something that someone wrote on my personal page, so I won't share the name yeah. and I won't share the name of the child. Um, but they said, "Thank you for posting this, the article. the article." Um, that picture of Chrissy sitting on the edge of the hospital bed just gutted me, and I will say. That is what I heard from a lot of women who have experienced loss yeah. and, and men um, is that that picture really resonated with them because they they had that same moment where right. they were sitting on the edge of the bed, just broken. So she said that picture gutted me. While I know sharing such heartbreak may seem odd to some, it can also be an important, important part of getting your brain and your heart to accept that your child both lived and died. Mm -hmm. I know my picture from my child's gravesite seems strange or morbid to some, but from my mama's heart, it is the only place where all of my children are physically together. Yeah. Another thing that is important, too, is that while Chrissy is sharing the loss of her son, she is also sharing his birth. And that is so yes. important to a grieving mom's heart. Right. Like if Chrissy, if Jack had been, if Jack was still alive and she had shared photos from his birth, right. she still would have gotten backlash because it's Twitter and it's a cesspool. Right. And she's got sort of this background that folks don't like. But. All in all, people would have been like, oh, there's just someone sharing a picture of their baby. Right. No big deal. Being able to share your baby's life, no matter how short or how sad or how painful, is a way of honoring that child and the love you have for them. When a grieving mother shares those precious moments about the child she's lost, she is sharing something sacred to her, and that should be treated with all the love and care you would treat a mother sharing about her living child. Yeah. That's so powerful. Mm-hmm. Side note, do you think we can fit an ice cream cake in our freezer? We're being asked that question right now. I really don't think so. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Otherwise, oh. we're throwing stuff away. Okay. Um, listen, I I don't even know what to say about that. That's so real and sweet. And so, like, it's such an interesting perspective. It really is something that people need to take a step back and really consider what what it's like to go through something that you have not experienced and you really should think about commenting. Oh my God. That, was just, that should be the golden rule. Like if I haven't gone through this, what right do I have to say really anything besides I'm sorry and thank you for sharing. That's yeah. it. That's all. Um, the Mayo Clinic goes on to say, take care of yourself, get adequate rest, eat healthy diet, include physical activity or daily routine. So self care is not selfish. That whole, we talk about that a lot in this show. Um, Take medication only under your doctor's guidance. Don't turn to tobacco or alcohol to soothe your pain. Um, so take care of yourself. Uh, you agree with that, obviously. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> Talk to your partner. Uh, don't expect your spouse or partner to cope with the grief the same way you do. Right. Interesting. Very important. Right. Which can be hard in some couples, right? Because mm -hmm. if, if one partner wants to keep photos, wants to take these photos, wants to like blow up the photos from the hospital and put them in the living room, but the other partner doesn't, Right. that's it's a hard space to walk. One partner isn't right and the other is wrong. You've got to sort of compromise and that can be tricky and requires really good communication. I was just going to, I was just, gonna, just, just going to say, be open and honest mm -hmm. um, and have that line of communication mm -hmm. pretty open. And so, you know, you don't assume anything. Right. Um, keep a journal. 
write down your thoughts and feelings. Uh, this might be an effective outlet for your pain. You might also write letters, notes, or poems to your baby or about the baby. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, seek help from others. Friends and loved ones might not know what to say or how to help. Tell them what you need. Tell them when you need support. If you want to talk about the baby, if you'd like to keep help keep the baby's memory alive, let your friends and loved ones know how you feel. Yeah. That's important. Yeah. And and sort of lean into those friends and family that are doing a good job supporting you. This right. is something that happens, uh, I think, with trauma, with grief, with loss, with big transitions in life, is that sometimes the people that are able to show up for you are not the people you thought would show up for you. Right. Right? Like, right. like they're not, you know, that maybe there's someone, I was going to go down a different road. I won't go down a different road. Sometimes the, your sort of inner circle just doesn't quite know how to provide support around grief. Right. And there might be someone sort of like five levels out who's like a friend of a friend that you just know on Facebook or something who is somehow showing up for you in a way that really feels good. Lean into that relationship yeah. because so often things kind of get scrambled after a loss, a significant event, and you realize, oh, I I actually need to be closer with this sort of person over here because this is the support I need while grieving right, right now. Um, not in like a, I don't want to be friends with you right. anyway, but it's, it's okay to sort of lean into those relationships. There's a, the, the final We're point. We're probably going to have a dog bark. We've got a child coming home. Oh, okay. We'll hear the dog bark on the live stream and on the recording. That's okay. all good. Um, this is the changing perspectives podcast after all. Um, the final point here in moving forward or uh, moving towards healing, not forward, moving towards healing, uh, is join a support group. Um, this mm -hmm. is what the Mayo Clinic says. Sharing with others who've experienced pregnancy loss, either in person or online, can be comforting. A clergy member or spiritual advisor may be another good source. The baby's grandparents or other loved ones might benefit from similar support. That's mm -hmm. interesting. A lot of people don't think about the other impact beyond just the just the you know the immediate parents um you know siblings I siblings think, are a big part of oh, it for too. sure siblings as well as grandparents or i think chris's mom is mm -hmm. in some of those pictures okay i think she got to hold yeah. him so what do you think about support groups um support groups in it depends support groups can be wonderful mm -hmm. uh they are going to vary based on who's running them is it a professional running them is it a lay person running them are they open support groups, meaning like you can drop in whenever, or are they closed support groups like, hey, we're going to meet for eight weeks and it's sort of like a defined sort of structure. Who are the other people in the support group? Is it only people that have had similar loss to you? Um, and how soon after the loss is it for you? So you could go and have like a terrible experience at a support group, but that might be because of one of those factors and not necessarily about a support group. So sort of like a therapist right yeah. like you could have a really well-trained therapist but it's just not a good fit um so i think they can be a good fit but folks need to sort of prepare themselves for like it might take you some time to find the right fit yeah. and the right timing too because sometimes it's just too soon to go sit in a space where you're hearing other people's yeah. loss too okay well that's the the mayo clinic article i thought that was a good article we'll share that link yeah. to everyone um, some good advice and good explanation of what might be going through, um, what someone could be going through during a time just, like this. We're, we're coming up on the hour mark. Yeah, so did I have you a just couple wanna, of okay. final points here. I wanted to first, we'll end with talking about the National um, Pregnancy Loss Awareness Month, but I wanted to draw attention to your article one more time, um, which again, you can find it on Changing Perspectives Online, uh, the Facebook page and today.com, uh, the parents, Today Parents, um, has shared this as well, and it's entitled, Can We Let Parents Grieve Without Judgment, written by our very own Jenny Brennan. Um, it's a great article, and I, I wanted to share a quote that really spoke to me. I thought you captured this really well. You write, something awful has happened. A parent's worst nightmare has come true. Their baby died. The baby they named, felt move, dreamed about, envisioned a future for, and talked about with their other children has died. It is real. It is grief. They are allowed to talk about it and express it. That's the message that we really wanted to leave with everybody. Today. Yeah. Uh, and I guess, I guess the set, the sub subtext there is if you don't agree, zip it. Yeah. And, and like <laughs> ask questions, but ask someone else the questions. Right. I can give right. you some books. 
articles to read. You can listen to this podcast. We can talk about grief. Yeah. Um, but there's there's never a reason to be mean like that to people, but especially not people that are grieving. You have to let people grieve in their own way. And you have to understand that the sort of American way of grieving, this very sort of... Um, uh, Private, secret, uh, don't tell like everybody. Shameful is, shameful is not at all how the vast majority of cultures and animals grieve. It is very sort of antiseptic. And, um, and if you do spend some time studying other cultures and their grieving process, at the end of it, you will come out and say, whoa, our way is really weird. Our way is really not healthy. Right. We have to remember that, that we're kind of doing it wrong. And so when people are doing it differently, maybe they're actually yeah. doing it right. Absolutely. So right, grief stuff is, is my little yeah. soapbox. Um, I want to switch gears and talk a little bit about what this month is. Uh, it's very apropos and, and happened to just coincidentally be the same month where this Chrissy Teigen, John Legend story happened, but it is National Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month, uh, and it occurs every October. Uh, during the entire month, we take time to honor and remember those who have lost a child during pregnancy or lost a child in infancy. Um, and I've got a couple different links to share, but this um, got started in 1988, believe it or not, October 25th. Uh, President Reagan designated the entire month of October 1988 as Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month. That's really interesting. Very interesting. Now I want to read up on the history yeah. of that. Um, I have a quote from Reagan um, on the day that he coined, that he mm -hmm. announced and declared it. He said, this is Ronald Reagan, quote, when a child loses his parent, they are called an orphan. Mm -hmm. When a spouse loses her or his partner, they are called a widow or widower. When a parent loses a child, there isn't a word to describe them. This month recognizes the loss that so many parents experience across the United States and around the world. It is also meant to inform and provide resources for parents who have lost children due to miscarriage, ectopic pregnancy, molar pregnancy, stillbirths, birth defects, SIDS, and other causes. Go Reagan. Go Reagan. Yeah. I was just going to say, I hashtag know. go Reagan. It's okay. Really wow. Um, so that, I can't do now. That was a long time ago. 32 years ago? Yeah. 88, is that what you said? 88. Wow. Uh, let's see. And yet here we are still not, it's still so sort of in the dark and so not something we talk about. Right. Um, there is a timeline. I'm going to share this article, nationaltoday.com, all about National Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month. Um, 1988, President Reagan uh, designated the month. Um, then the, the movement really picked up speed in 2002. Um, Mothers by the name of Robin Bayer, Lisa Brown, Tammy Novak all came together to strategize on how to secure proclamations from support from every state. Um, and then 2006, the House passed the resolution. In 2016, um, we finally have all 50 states having proclamations. Um, took what a while. Year? 2016. Oh, that's interesting. Interesting, yeah. Um, spearheaded by Robin Bear's group, Remembering Our Babies, quote unquote, that's the name of the group. Mm -hmm. All 50 states have proclamations honoring National Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Day on October 15th. Um, but the whole month is, um, you know, the, the awareness month, but the October 15th is the, the day. The day. Interesting. And interesting to note that it was October 1st, the day that Chrissy yeah. posted, or I believe it was that day. Maybe she posted them Thursday. the night before and I saw them. Yeah, it was Thursday morning is what mm -hmm. she posted, I think. Okay. Um, but this article talks about how to observe National Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month. I guess the first option is to light candles. Uh, every night in October, light and blue, sorry, light pink and blue candles, mm -hmm. place them in your windows. Uh, some communities do candlelight vigils. Um, the glow of candlelight at night is a beautiful way to remember, to remember and honor. Uh, they talk about developing a PR campaign. Uh, October can be a tough month to squeeze it, another remembrance event. Um, but you can coordinate with friends and families, develop a press kit, strategies to get the word out, um, start a small neighborhood publication. And then they also say um, you can do ribbons around trees. Assemble your nearest and dearest and scout out trees in your neighborhood, tie pink and blue ribbons as a remembrance. Um, make everything beautiful for the babies, that they say. So this is a... Um, a great article that we will share that talks all about uh, the National Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say something as you were talking and then Sorry. I lost it. So trying it's to remember if it's going to come back. It was around 
you were talking about lighting candles. I guess yeah. I was going to say, you know, do anything that sort of feels right for you. Yes. Um, the space is space for, I guess, folks to grieve, right? Like it's sort of, this opens up dialogue around it. It opens conversation around it. I remember what I was going to say. I promise every single person who's listening right now or watching or stumbles across this, even if it's five years from now, you know somebody right now in your life who has gone through this yes. and has not told you. I guarantee it. Yep. You know somebody. And so think about that. Like, think about the fact someone actually said this, uh, I think actually on the article I shared on the Today one, or the Today shared, um, but they said, I feel so bad for the women who are friends with the women that are making these hateful comments. Right. And and I agree because underneath all of that is, you know, your comments that you're sort of putting out into the universe about Chrissy and John and how you disagree. Your friends are hearing that. Your colleagues, your coworkers, your neighbors, the, the parents of your kids' friends. I promise you, you know at least one person who's going through this maybe right now yeah. that is not telling you because of this negativity around it. So right. think about that and think about kind of creating space and dialogue. And if you hear about an experience like this from your friend, it's okay to ask your friend to talk about it if they want to. You know, so often people don't ask. You tell me about your baby. Tell me yeah. about, did you, you know, right, right. what was your baby's name? Um, all of that. It's okay to do that. Your friend, it's also okay for your friend to say, I don't want to talk about it, right. but it's okay to kind of lean into that space. So kind of think about that as you're walking through the rest of October, thinking mm. about there are a lot of people that have gone through this and just aren't talking about it. Right. So thank you for humoring us with this um, yeah. heavy topic on a Saturday morning for those well, listen, of you watching. We are and, going to um, have a tiny bit extra content for the live streamers. Well, so stay on. Don't read those comments. We're going to save those. What comments? There's some new comments that came no, through, I but we're going to hang out with... We're going to hang out with the live streamers in uh, after we end the episode recording uh, and give you a little extra content. Um, but we're going to go ahead and close this out. Do you have anything else to add, Jenny? I do not. I think you just summed it up pretty well, actually. Okay. All right, everybody. That is going to do it for today. Thank you so much for listening. For today's show notes links, you can check out Jenny's article, Can We Let Parents Grieve Without Judgment? the Mayo Clinic article, and the nationaltoday.com article that I shared about National Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month. Just as a reminder, this episode was for education and entertainment purposes only. Should you need additional support, please contact your healthcare provider for information and referrals. Please follow us on Facebook, everybody, at Changing Perspective Podcast, and on Instagram at Changing Perspectives Blog. You can send us an email to info at changingperspectivesonline.com. You can also visit our website by going to changingperspectivesonline.com. And while you're there, don't forget to visit the shop to check out all of that Changing Perspectives merchandise. 15% off sale going on right now through October 7th. Go ahead and subscribe to the show, everybody, so you'll never miss an episode. And we will see you next time. Say bye, Jenny. Bye, Jenny. Buy me that shirt, Jenny. Buy it yourself. <laughs> okay. We Very have clear, two minutes. I, I want to stay on because I love Jilly's comment. Hi, Jilly. Um, Hi, Jilly. Uh, people don't make fun of me for being a gigantic Hamilton fan, but I couldn't agree more, Jilly. I get tied up, or teared up. Teared up as well. Did I say tied up? Mm -hmm. So Jilly writes, it's quite uptown from Hamilton. Always makes me teary every time I listen. Same. And that is about child loss. Mm -hmm. um, Eliza and Alexander Hamilton lost their son and uh, Philip. And the, that, the stuff in that song is so real about it's like a really diff, really good depiction of grief um what is the quote in there that <clears throat> can you can you imagine well they say they're going through the unimaginable yeah. right it's, like that yeah. it is unimaginable so um that's also talking about uh well sort of the, their relationship too but yes i cry yeah. every time i hear that and Deborah writes, it's so hard for the family that wants to give support or accept others being the ones leaned on. But I get it. Letting that family so go is the best to support the one hurting. Yeah. So sort of referring to what I said about how sometimes it's the people sort of outside that wind up being the supporters that you need. That can be really hard to sort of uh, bear witness to when you're on the inside. Yeah. Um, there are moments that the words don't reach, right, Chili? Yeah. 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 You had written, or you written, you just talked to us a moment ago during the recording about how you have no idea that, but you, you would willing, be willing to bet that someone you know 
has gone through this without even knowing. Mm -hmm. um, and for those that have shared those moments with Jenny and I, as well as um, you know, privately or publicly on Jenny's post and article, um, our our heart goes out to you. We love you, and we um, we're sorry for your losses. For sure. um, but we're you know we're here, and thank you for sharing. It's really important. Um, any other comments or questions on the Facebook feed? Not from Should, me. No. Yeah. Anything else to add to our friends today? No, but thank you for watching. Yeah. All right. That is going to do it for the live stream. We'll see everybody next time. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye.